it's time for a dead mines dungeon guide video this dungeon can be a little difficult to go through we have a hogger deck for the beast week and we will go through the dungeon and then we will go through the minutes and the talents so let's start this first level right away and the main thing you want to do in here well we want to keep on mining this gold if we can but we also want to be deploying our wellbex on that pipeline over there i'm gonna bait these with my billboard because we did not have our hogger ready and I want to say, if you can have this Raptor talent for this dungeon, I would recommend picking it, because it will make your life much easier. Here we go. The whelps are taking care of this torrent that would otherwise be stealthed and would just come to our base and harass us in multiple ways. So we will be able to deal with that like this. And we should be able to deal some damage over there as well. I think I'm going to be sending harpies over there. And I'm gonna distract those with my quillbor again so that our uh, lake farmer will stay alive. I wanna get, capture this meeting stone as well so we will have an access from this side. This is a really short access to the boss. This side would work as well, but probably if you can have them both, that's of course a better option. Okay, I was a little bit hasty in there because I want to go mine this gold. It's really important that you try to either, well, mine gold on this map or at least prevent your opponent from getting gold because you will be overrun quite easily if you let that happen now i think we have to defend against that one so let's uh, send our minis on this way right now lake farmer is an excellent ranged backline attacker especially with the increased range talent i just absolutely love him love using him in multiple decks he can, for example, he can outrange towers, so if there's nothing killing the tow uh, killing your uh, lake farmer, he can just solo towers for you with the, with the talent. I will show you the talent after this dungeon, but we are making our way towards the boss right now. I usually want to push on from this side, because this meeting zone is so close, and it also allows us to defend us a little bit more easier, I feel like. So now, for example, in here, I'm going to deny this gold with our quill ball because I don't want to give our enemy the gold. And we are already going to be winning this one because of the poison from the Blake Farmer. So that's basically the idea. You push with your tanks and you have your backline range units dealing damage from afar. And what better than the Blake Farmer for that purpose? So let's go to the second stage. Now, this stage might be a little difficult because there's so many huge groups from enemies periodically coming from both of these sides and that's why we have the living bomb spell in our deck so let's start this one and in the beginning you want to get these chests and also go mine this gold from the beginning and for now we are waiting we are waiting for well we want our living bomb spell like this and then we will wait for the enemies to be near this tower so we can blow them up and deal extreme damage to the tower as well that huntress is a little bit annoying thing to happen for us but i think we will be able to do this and that's why that we were able to pretty much take out the tower we will able to deal out deal with most of those enemies from that group and i think we will we should be able to take this yeah we are able to take this tower and now we also want to take this uh, middle tower as well the right hand side tower is not that important if you ask me it's a good addition to have but it is not super super important we can do it with the living bomb spell, bomb spell i think we just wait for them to be closer to the tower and then we will bomb them and there we go the tower is now ours but we do have to defend this tower otherwise we will be losing it so now we have all the three towers and now what we want to do in here actually is well we can just sit and wait if we don't want to really push and focus on defense and just use the living bomb spell over here once those groups of enemies spawn i will show once the next patch comes there they come so we will be casting the living bomb living bomb spell in here and that will also damage cookie like there you go and you can just basically kill cookie like that if you don't want to use uh, your units to push cookie but we can also push him with our units as well so we just keep on doing the same thing if we lose the towers we will just be recapturing them 
and then we will be every time a group of enemies spawns from here we will be living bombing them and slowly and steadily keep pushing towards Cookie and eventually we will be able to kill him now it should be pretty close to the time when the next batch of enemies spawn so there we go we are also gonna be living bombing them like this and it will also affect Cookie a lot there we go that's a huge damage to Cookie Just keep on defensing the towers is really what you want to do. You can also unbound units. Use unbound units to deal some damage, extra damage to Cookie if you have the gold to spare. Like in here, that's a little, well, greedy. But we did get a little bit damage in, so that's always a good, good thing. I think we can go and mine this gold as well. Again, in here as well, if you can deny your opponent the gold, that's excellent thing to do. If you cannot, then... Well, you might be in trouble at some point. That looks like a lot of uh, Molochs. We should be fine against those. Again, a new patch is coming in, so we are getting ready to living bomb the hell out of them. There we go, and that's gonna be bang, a lot of damage down the cookie again. I think we should be able to take that uh, those chests with our Raptors. They really do help. In that sense as well and I think now we are gonna be just uh, unbounding Cookie, probably kill him with these uh, well backs, flame burst at least yeah there we go second stage done so you can either push with your units or you can just snipe him with these living bomb spells and killing those group of enemies meanwhile let's go to the third stage and in this last stage we definitely want to try and avoid getting any Annoying enemies to be copied by these machines or getting our strong units to be copied by these machines. So we will try to feed some cheap units. Uh, we have Quillbow that we can just drop on, on top of these if we need to. Or we can just hope that our Cobalt or someone else goes there. We will start by mining this gold and also getting this chest. Let's see if we can get that Ogre Mage killed before our... Uh, Lake Farmer is killed by it. Yeah, it looks like we good, and that's a really, really good thing for us. Now, I think the Lake Farmer can just uh, draw the tower for us, because it can outrange the tower. That's really convenient, so we can focus on pushing this side a little bit. And getting the Kobolds copied is just a very nice and easy thing for us, because they are, essentially, they are free kills. They are not a threat. And we can also counter this uh, Molten Giant with our Wellbex. Oh, that Ogre Mage is a little bit annoying. I think I'm gonna will bore this one because I don't want a... Wow. Thank you. Thank you, game. Okay, here we go. So I was saying I don't want these Molten Giants to be copied. So we got our uh, will boss copied instead. And we should be able to deal with those honestly, I think. The only problem is this Ogre Mage that's walking on top, because that's going to be really annoying for us. So we would want to get rid of that if possible. I don't know if we can... Well, Pex, burst it. Completely dead. Yes, we could. That's really nice for us. I'm going to use Harpies to kill that Tauren. Because I want to get to this gold as soon as possible. And I think we should also get this chest, because it's two gold mini and it will give us two additional gold so always a good deal now let's see we can get rid of that and once these are ready i'm gonna distract sneed with our uh, will boss so we will get some free damage in and now i'm gonna also drop some unbound well packs over there as well some harpies coming over that's gonna be just fine even if we take a little bit of damage, that shouldn't be an issue. And now that the ra Raptor got copied, I can just safely push with our leader. to just need and oh, Again, I'm gonna use Quill Ball to distract Sneed. Unfortunately, the Torrent <laughs> decided to come to the rescue. Otherwise, we would probably have killed Sneed with this push. Let's see, we might be facing some Molten Giants right now. Yep, we are. That is unfortunate. I'm gonna mine that gold. Seems like we are going to be needing it. I'm going to poison those uh, Molten Giants. 
we are so close to winning that we can probably just unbound need at this point though so we don't really have to worry about anything else there we go the dungeon done with a crash right in the middle of that one gg blizzard gg thank you very much so let's go take a look at the build and the minis and there we go so these are the talents we are using in this deck i'm using the hanhock for hogger for extra hp every time he is played for Quillbore, I'm using the Tunnel Vision for faster deployment. If you have Bristleback, you can use Bristleback as well. For Null Brute, I'm using the Rabbit to make him one gold cheaper to play and also give him the Cycle Trait. You could also run this guy in this slot as well because he has the Cycle Trait with this talent. Uh, but in here we have the Plague Farmer, like you saw, they can outrange the towers, basically give you free capture on towers if nothing comes and kills our Plague Farmer while they are doing it, so essentially free tower captures by this range plus one from the Splashing Pumping Talents, and also really nice area of damage attack dealer, damage dealer dealing a huge amount of uh, poison damage to any enemies caught in that splash. And then in here, the Living Bomb. Now, talent doesn't really matter in here, you can have, the other talents might be better, chain reaction, even blast radius perhaps, I don't know. But I've been using the Burden of Faith because I do like the day's effect from that one. But the most important thing is that this bomb is here for the second stage. You can destroy those group of enemies. You can basically capture those towers free. You can deal some free damage essentially to Cookie as well while you are bombing those groups of enemies with this bomb. So this is the reason we have this Living Bomb spell in this deck. And it makes the second stage so freaking easy to play. In here, Welpex with the Flame Burst talent for the first stage, especially for that pipeline where the Stealth Torrent is walking. Also really useful against those group of enemies. If you don't have the Living Bomb, you can also use the Flame Burst X to burst those group of enemies in second stage as well. And also deal some extra damage as an unbound unit to sneak in third stage as well. And finally, in here we have the Harpies with the Infectious Swipes, real high DPS unit for you to run you could run someone else in here as well. Now, I want to say, if you can get the Lifesteal Relic from the dungeon, it's probably worth picking because it's a really, really strong talent. It will help Ogre as well, but also if you are running the Lifesteal Relic for the melee units, you will want to run either Fire Elemental with Immolation Aura or the Abomination with the Noxious Prisons. Now, these both are extremely strong units with the melee units Lifesteal Relic, especially the fire elemental with the immolation aura is basically an immortal tank at that point so that's a, the strongest talent for any dungeon right now if you can get the lifesteal relic pick it there we go that's our dungeon guide for this week thank you very much for watching i will see you next time black out